Hi, the new CLK or clock from Tenderfoot Electronics is our 4HP multifunction clock divider and clock source. It combines many clock division functions along with an onboard low jitter clock source, meaning there's no need for an additional module in your rack to send it a clock signal. CLK is quick to use and has a single clickable encoder used as a tap tempo button, as a rotary encoder to either increase or to decrease the tempo. And a long press of it will stop and reset the clock back to zero. A single tap will restart the clock at the last tempo selected. From top to bottom, you can see that we have a clock input should you wish to use the module as a frequency or clock divider fed by another source. And beside this is a reset input to restart the division count. Underneath these two jacks are the outputs with the divide by one output at the top and the divide by eight output at the bottom. Below these are four indicator LEDs to show you the current maximum division mode and also to help navigate through the menu. In its standard settings, each channel will output a 10 millisecond pulse unless the clock frequency is above 10 Hertz, at which point the duty cycle will be fixed at 10%, allowing you to go up into the audio range without the triggers blending together into a gate. So to start off, I'll just patch a single hi-hat into the first output so you can hear the master tempo output. If it looks like some of the LEDs are not firing, this is just down to the frame rate of the camera being used. To hear the relationship between the master tempo and the other divisions, I'll patch in a snare and some other drums and we'll go through, it, through each channel. So there's the divide by one triggering a closed hi-hat. And if we turn the encoder, you'll hear that it increases in rate. And we can take it right up into audio rate. And if we want to slow down again, we can just tap, tap, tap. And there we go. Now with the uh, divide by two output, let's put an open hi-hat. And let's go three. And let's just do a snare. And divide by four, let's go kick. And again, we can speed that all up. And let's move that snare to five. And let's go to six. Let's move the open hat to seven. And down to eight. And just to show that stop feature one more time, we hold the encoder in and it stopped. And to start at the last tempo again, we just tap it again. Now, if we hold down the encoder and rotate it at the same time, you'll see that we can increase the maximum number of divisions from eight to 16 to 32 or to 64. So let's just do that quickly. So there's 16. There's 32. And you can hear that it's it's all slowed down. And 64.
When using the onboard clock, the individual channel divisions are distributed across the larger division scale to give um, a more musical range of uh, division outputs. So they're not just doubled each time you go up through the, the, the max division modes. Uh, you'll also notice that the divide by one output remains at the master tempo, which we found is much more useful when not using an external clock. Uh, when an external clock source is used, all of the divisions will be doubled each time as you go up through the, the four maximum division modes. Now to access the various other settings in the menu, uh, first of all, let me just unpatch these just so you can see more clearly. Uh, it's the same as choosing the, the maximum division mode. You hold in the encoder and you keep rotating it clockwise. So we'll go past 64 and this mode you'll see the LEDs are scrolling from bottom to top. That means it's in counting up mode. So we'll start at zero on all of the channels and then it'll go one, two, three and upwards like that. If we rotate one more click, that's the countdown mode. So in this mode, everything will start off with an on and then it will start counting. So counting the upbeats and downbeats, the last two basically. Rotate one more spot. So yeah, if we go to the next setting, you'll see these short pulses um, stand for the, just the, the quick pulse output, um, which is in contrast to the next setting, which is the 50% duty cycle output. So here in the short pulse, you get either a, a 10 millisecond pulse or shorter than that. So 10% pulse width of the, uh, the master clock. Uh, square wave, 50% duty cycle. Sounds a bit better if you're using it as an audio output. And rotate one more time. So the final setting is the random mode and you set the master clock and then each of the divisions getting further and further away from number one is less and less likely to fire. And all of these modes, they're not uh, mutually exclusive. So you can have count up and 50% duty cycle on. You could have count down and pulse output on. You could have uh, the random mode and we can set the 50% duty cycle as well. And you get much longer pulses on the random mode. To select one of the menu items, all you do is you land on it and you release the encoder. And then that is turned on. So if we patch into the random trigger outputs, let's have a kick on there. And again, the maximum divisions can be used to further uh, decrease the probability of the lower outputs. So if we go to 32, you'll see that these ones down here, they fire much less frequently than earlier. Now that we're driving this from an external clock, uh, we've got a, let's use a shorter cable just so you can see. We've got the square wave output from a source VCO going to the um, the input of the CLK, the clock. Uh, we're running at fairly low audio rate right now, but I can patch this, uh, you know what, let's, let's move into the 50% duty cycle mode so we can get a slightly nicer wave output. There we go. And we'll go into our mixer. So what you're hearing right now is the CLK producing a 50% duty cycle pulse. Um, so it it is unipolar between zero volts and 10 volts. It's not a uh, it's not between the the negative and positive rails, um, and that is matching the frequency of the oscillator we're putting into it. So we can go up an octave. And you'll hear it does get a little bit glitchy um, in the, the higher audio rates. But you can use that to your advantage. So if we leave it there, we can then use the separate um, division outputs for frequency divisions. So that's our master frequency. 
that's like one octave down and then we can divide that by three four two octaves down let's increase the master frequency a bit so essentially you're getting subharmonics out of the clock now so we can patch in some other some of the other outputs and we can kind of make a a crude chord generator could even do we could sequence the um the the vco that's that that's giving us the master frequency so let's very quickly do that we'll take cv output from the quantizer into the one volt per octave of the oscillator let's go to here to the lattice and let's Lock that just from an LFO, seeing as we're using our clock source. There we go. Now, when we While it's doing that, we could change to the pulse output and see what it sounds like, but it's not going to sound quite as nice as the 50% cycle output. That is down, there's the pulse. So we get a much more like nasally, tinny, like, small pulse whip sound out of it. And let's change that back to the 50%. So go through the menus. There we go. Now, of course, when you are using the menu system, because it is such a compact module, uh, you will get a dropout from the actual outputs. So whatever the LED is showing in the menu system, that is also going to be what's output at that, uh, at that jack. So, but that's just a compromise of having so many features in such a small module. Really. So I hope you enjoyed this little run through of the, the CLK clock module. If you're interested, check out the website. It should be released very soon um, on the tenderfootelectronics.com website. And also check out our dealers in Europe, America, and in Taiwan as well. So uh, yeah, all of those details are on the website. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye.